check the chat later. They can. You can check Chase Facebook chat later. <laughs> Oh well. How about that? Turn, turn the button on. There you go. Well, good morning, everyone, to our first in-person gathering service Sunday morning since March. And we're outdoors on a lovely day that fortunately has been warming up a little bit. So that's wonderful. <clears throat> Welcome to Suncoast, where we teach and practice truth, trust, and transformation. It's taken a lot of hard work for our worship team, our tech team, those elves who decorated yesterday. Thanks to Jackie and also to Debbie for repainting our creche, which looks gorgeous, and for the sign. <clears throat> I think it was Santa and, and Jackie who did the sign. And uh, we are so thankful, and Deb, and uh, to Linda, Connie, and all your crew, and to our Outward Bound team, and to our Reopen team, everyone who made this possible. We're also really blessed to have visiting with us today um, a friend of a re friends of Renee and Terry's, Lisa London, and Audrey, raise your hands, and Lisa will be signing for us during Renee's solo. We're grateful for your ministry, and thank you. And also, um, from our governing board, welcome Chad Hobbs. Just raise your hand and his spouse. Raise your hand. All right, we love you. We're so glad you're here. Uh, I know we have anyone, we don't have anyone visiting for the first time, do we? I don't think so, but some folks who are visiting from other churches, I know from Church of the Trinity, I see a couple of folks. So we welcome you and bless you today. Give them a big hand, too. So now... <clears throat> Um, we can't hug while we're here unless the person you're with, that you're sitting with, but if you will just now rise as you're able, and especially for our friends on Facebook Live, but also to each other, give each other a big warm hug, and turn around and just go, welcome, just go, welcome, we love you. <laughs> Amen. You may be seated, and now we invite Jean to come and share the ways you can connect this week. <coughs> the bad thing about wearing a mask is your 
eyes get, your glasses get fogged up. But anyway, good morning. Lots of announcements today. We are so excited to see everyone at our first outdoor worship service and to see your smiling masked faces. <laughs> As a reminder for all our in-person events, you are not, if you are not feeling well or have symptoms of COVID, and are a volunteer, please do not come into the church building or to outdoor events until you have quarantined for 14 days or tested negative. If you have tested positive for COVID, if you are a volunteer, please do not enter the church building until you have tested negative for the virus. And do not come to outdoor events if you are positive until you have tested negative. So if you're positive, just stay away. Okay. <laughs> Renee, I made you laugh. <laughs> Please join us for trivia tomorrow night, Monday, December 7th at 6 p.m. We have lots of fun and learn a lot of fun facts. We are looking forward to another outdoor, in-person worship service next Sunday, December 13th. And on Christmas Eve, Christmas Eve is on December 24th, by the way, uh, please remember to register if you are planning to attend so the Outward Bound team will know how many to prepare for. We will be practicing social distancing and you will be required to wear a mask. Angels play an important role in the Bible, especially during Advent. Please join us this Tuesday, December 8th at 7 p.m. for our Advent series, Do Not Be Afraid. It focuses on the appearances of angels in the Gospel Christmas stories. Classes will include scripture study, video presentations, and discussion facilitated by Reverend Nancy, Reverend Vicki, and Sidney Duranko. Does your pet have what it takes to make the pet, uh, Suncoast Pet Contest showdown? This is your last week to submit to your favorite pet photos. The theme for this week is Pets and Their Owners. Please submit your proud family pet pictures. Proud family pet pictures. By this Friday, December 11th. Hope you can join us for our upcoming drum circle on Wednesday, December 16th. If you plan on attending, please e email Dr. David Katz and let him know if you need a drum. Only 19 days till Christmas. Shopping online is safe and fun. You can sit on your own couch and not wear a mask and while earning money for Suncoast MCC. No mask. Okay. Okay, I lost my place. <laughs> if you order from Amazon, select Amazon Smile and choose Suncoast Cathedral Metropolitan Church as your charity at no extra cost to you. Easy and simple. A portion will go to Suncoast. Looking for that special gift for that special someone? not wanting to venture out into crowds of shoppers, why not send them some fresh holiday greens to lift their spirits and help us raise funds for our 2021 Venice Pride Festival. It is easy and our supplier, Lynch Creek Farm, will send your wreath directly to your family and friends. Shipping is free and Venice Pride receives 15% for every purchase. The deadline for ordering is Friday, December 18th. For more details about our events, <coughs> excuse me, our events and programs, please see the Staying in Touch newsletter, the church website, or call the church office. And now here are some protocols for today's service. Together we are confident that we can keep each other safe, but here is what we need from you. 
Suncoast is practicing social distancing. Maintain a minimum of six feet distancing at all times. We can't stress this enough. Follow all signage or instructions given by the volunteers. Wear your mask during the entire service and until you exit safely. Make sure that your mask covers both the mouth and nose. Our volunteers have set up chairs for you based on households and the registrations received. Please, please do not move them to another location. If you need assistance, please raise your hand and an usher will assist you. If you need to use the restroom, you go back there. Um, they are open on a limited basis. A volunteer is stationed at the door to limit the number of people inside. A communion cup has been placed on your chair. Please do not open it until you receive instructions during communion. After the service, please wait until instructed to exit. We will exit by rows. No socializing, hugging, shaking hands, or kissing even though that's what we would have normally done before the pandemic. From now on, we are going to establish a new tradition at Suncoast, and instead of hugging or shaking hands, to welcome each other. From your seat, place your hands crisscrossed on your chest. Okay, okay. we're doing this again. Um, count to three and then gently extend your arms. Okay. Good. And now, let us prepare our hearts as we worship our Lord. Take you take your mask off. freaking out when the other worldly angel creature appeared to him at the altar of the temple. But Mary was simply perplexed by her encounter with an angel. Why would such an incredible message come to a common girl, just barely a woman? Then her reply to such a foretelling of her future was simple, let it be so. Then Mary sang a song of peace and praise. We light today the Advent candle of peace, and we relight the candle of hope. guiding spirit, a light within us your flame of peace this day. Grant us openness to hear your message. Grant us courage to be your messengers in the world, creating more peace in the midst 
of fear. Amen. You may be seated. Six months later in Nazareth, a city in the rural province of Galilee, the heavenly angel Gabriel made another appearance. This time, the angel was sent by God to meet with a virgin named Mary, who was engaged to a man named Joseph, a descendant of King David himself. The angel entered her home. Greetings! You are favored. God is with you. Among all women on the earth, you have been blessed. The heavenly angel's words baffled Mary, and she wondered what type of greeting this was. Mary, don't be afraid. You have found favor with God. Listen, you are going to become pregnant. You will have a son, and you must name him Savior, or Jesus. Jesus will become the greatest among humankind. He will be known as the Son of the Highest God. God will give him the throne of his ancestor David, and he will reign over the covenant family of Jacob forever. Uh, look, <clears throat> I'm engaged and all, but we never, uh, you know, how can this be possible? The Holy Spirit will come upon you. The Most High will overshadow you. 
Are you getting my drift? You don't have to, uh, you know. That's why the Holy Child will be known as not just your son, but also as the Son of God. It sounds impossible, but listen, you know your relative Elizabeth has been unable to bear children and is now far too old to be a mother. Yet, she has become pregnant, as God willed it. Yes, in three months, she will have a son. So the impossible is possible with God. Here I am, God's humble servant. As you have said, let it be done to me. And the heavenly angel was gone. <laughs> Mary immediately got up no. and hurried to the hill country in the province of Judah where her cousins Zacharias and Elizabeth lived. When Mary entered their home and greeted Elizabeth, who felt her baby leap in her womb, Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. You are blessed, Mary, blessed among all women, and the child you bear is blessed, and blessed I am as well, that the mother of my God has come to me. As soon as I heard your voice greet me, my baby leapt for joy within me. How fortunate are you, Mary, for you believed what God had told you would be fulfilled. And Mary's response was this.
as you watch my face if a wiser one should have had my place but I offer all I am for the mercy Thank you. Thank you, Reverend Renee. Mm. Well, this is very emotional for me. As I saw you coming in the parking lot and walking up, I just filled my heart with so much joy. Um, I'm tired of speaking to a camera, even though I'm thankful that, they, that we are able to be <laughs> together in that way. Yes. But I love seeing you in person. It just fills my heart today. So. Um, I didn't bring my tissues, so I'm going to try to get through this and um, pray that uh, God will continue to sustain us during this time and we remain hopeful, right? So you pray with me. God, we pray that all that is heard and received by your people today will bring glory only to you, and we give praise, God, for each other and the ability to gather together in this place, on these beautiful grounds, your gift to us. Amen. So the angels in the Christmas story are kept quite busy. They appear to Zechariah announcing this unexpected birth of John the Baptist. They appear to Joseph. They appear to the uh, shepherds in the field. And this morning, the angel Gabriel appears to Mary and gives Mary this shocking news that she's going to have a child. So thanks to Reverend Renee, who served as the voice of Mary and sang that beautiful song. So I began imagining that Mary was probably just about as shocked as Reverend Renee would be if she got the news that she was going to bear a child. They would both be saying, how could this be? The gospel story gives us a very concise, neat version of the angel's appearance and Mary's response. But in my imagination, Mary certainly went through a much longer, tedious process of trying to figure this out. Shock, fear, denial, 
and eventually acceptance and peace and praise. And in the end, Mary sings this song, the Magnificat. It's one of the eighth most ancient Christian hymns. It's been sung by churches for centuries. So I started wondering, if Mary was singing today in contemporary times, what songs would she be singing? Well, initially, I imagined Mary singing Elvis Presley's I'm All Shook Up. <laughs> my hands are shaky and my knees are weak. I can't seem to stand on my own two feet. Who do you thank, thank when you have such luck? I'm in love. I'm all shook up. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, reading between the lines in the gospel, it seems that Mary was pretty shook up based on the words of Gabriel. Don't be afraid, Mary. When we look at the story on this side of history, we think that this news to Mary was just wonderful, beautiful words. But this really did turn her life upside down. A young, unmarried, pregnant woman, especially in her age, would probably endure terrible ridicule at the least, maybe even physical harm. So it's no wonder that Mary was a bit surprised and shaken. Some ponder whether or not Mary had a choice in this role. Some believe that Mary could have said no to the angel. Others believe that Mary is like other prophets who were simply informed, this is what you're going to do. And certainly, we don't hear the angel saying to Mary, this is your mission, Mary, if you accept it. No, the angel just says, this is happening, and it is happening now. And that is often the way life is for us, isn't it? We're given a task. We're given a role. We may have a burden to bear, must I say, COVID-19. And we aren't given a choice. It's simply the way it is. It's the way life is. And when we come to that realization that we don't have any control of what might happen to us, it can leave us shocked, surprised, and shaken. And it's in those moments that we too can benefit from those words that the angel Gabriel spoke. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. We need to hear those words, don't we? Every moment of every day in the lives that we are living right now. Mary then goes from being afraid and shook up to a stage of trust. Rather than being stuck in her question of denial, how can this be, Mary moves to an affirmation of trust. She says to the angel, maybe she even says it to herself, here I am, a servant of God. We often spend so much time asking that question, how can this be? We wish that things were not the way that they are. And I have to admit that at the beginning of COVID-19, I found myself in denial in that question, how can this be? Yes. Not that COVID-19 exists, I knew that that, ha that was true, but Denial about this isolation and the social distancing and not able to have church inside and being surrounded by sickness and death and the news. That it would even go on for months and months and months. But Mary can teach us in this moment that when we trust God and offer ourselves in service, that's when we can have peace in our lives. 
So I imagine that the second song that Mary might sing, if she was here, the contemporary song, is Your Eye is on the Sparrow. Why should I feel discouraged? Why should the shadows come? Why should my heart feel lonely and long for heaven and home? I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. God's eye is on the sparrow, and God watches over me. It's trust. Trust that no matter what lies ahead, the lonely pregnancy of an unmarried woman, unsure of Joseph's response, the long trip to Bethlehem on a donkey over rocky terrain, arriving with no place to stay, giving birth in a livestock, being sought out by a paranoid king, fleeing to Egypt, and then eventually watching her son as he goes before trial, is persecuted, and is crucified. Of course, Mary does not know that this is the life that she is going to live as the mother of God, but she does know that she has found favor in God's eyes, that God is watching over her, and that God will not let her down. When we can have this same trust, this trust in a God who takes care of us, no matter what comes our way, no matter what burdens we have to bear, then we can endure them. And we can also sing with assurance, God, your eye is on the sparrow, and you are watching over me. And we can say with Mary, here I am, the servant of God. Finally, if Mary were singing today, I think she might end with that Beatles song, Let It Be. Right. Paul McCartney went through a tumultuous time in his life. Uh, there was discord among the Beatles. He wasn't sleeping well. He was partying too much, staying up late. And he, uh, one of those nights when he finally fell asleep, he said he had a very sweet dream. And when he woke up, he wrote these words to the song, When I find myself in times of trouble, Mother Mary comes to me, speaking words of wisdom, let it be. And in my hour of darkness, she is standing right in front of me, speaking words of wisdom, let it be, let it be. Paul's mother named also named Mary, had died of breast cancer when Paul was 14 years old. But he said in this dream she was standing there in front of him and telling him everything was going to be fine and reassuring him. Let it be are the same words from our Mother Mary as she responds to that angel messenger. Advent Advent is about anticipating the future. For the church, we are anticipating the birth and rebirth of Christ into our world as we long and await for that into our weary world. Advent is also a personal welcoming of Jesus into our lives. And it is saying, yes, the way that Mary said yes. This Advent season, we all know, is different than any others we have experienced. And this season, we are especially waiting. We are waiting and longing and anticipating this vaccine. And we are praying that when that comes, that are the lot that around us things will be a little bit more peaceful. We are praying that we will be able to be connected again in the year ahead. So until that happens, in the meantime, no matter what emotions you might be feeling today, 
or feeling through this Advent and Christmas season, I pray that God will send you those special messengers, those special angels, and that we might hear those words the way Mary heard them. Do not be afraid. Nothing, nothing is impossible with God. May those words help us to trust. May those words help us to have peace through this season. Amen. Can I move this? In this season of Advent, we take time to give thanks for all the ways you, our Prince of Peace, bring peace to our lives. We are grateful for special messengers sent into a weary world and into our lives to help us when we are in need and who bring the message of God. Do not be afraid. and who are in need of healing, comfort, and peace. Let us take a moment to recall the names of those in need. We hear the message of God. Do not be afraid. In this time of pandemic, uncertainty and constant change and transition we ask for safety, justice, and peace for all who fear. Let us pause for a moment to reflect and pray. We hear the message of God. Do not be afraid. In this moment, we give thanks for our MCC brothers and sisters worldwide. Bless our leaders and especially be with those churches and individuals who may be struggling during this time. 
sustain us all and be with our sister church, the Circle MCC, and Reverend Mario in Milan, Italy. May we all hear the message of God, do not be afraid. And now let us pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Creator, your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Like Reverend Vicki, I feel very emotional today for many reasons, <clears throat> especially seeing some of you I have not seen since March, and um, so maybe even longer. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and um, I just want to thank you for hanging in there, for coming to a worship service where you have to wear a mask and have to sit apart and can't do, can't sing along like you'd like to, and uh, all those things are tough. And, uh, but we're a tough bunch, aren't we? Yes. And I want to thank you for hanging in there in your giving. We do have a basket here. If uh, you brought a tithe envelope or check with you, you can put it there. But I think uh, for the sake of not bunching up around it and all that, we invite you to hand it to one of the people in those yellow vests and entrust them to put it in the basket as you leave. The hardest time we have in this is leaving, because as we leave, we sort of think, oh, now I'm free to <laughs> go back to do what I would normally do, and we're not. So we're going to have to remember that as we leave. And so if you have something to give, give it to one of them. We really appreciate it. So many more of you have been using Easy Tithe, which is a wonderful thing, because it helps us to know what we can count on. We also want to thank you, those of you who have begun to give to the Christmas stocking offering. Uh, we've had a week. There are more and more stockings appearing on the uh, fireplace inside the church. And uh, next Sunday after church, we're going to have a little fun time, uh, some special music, some comedy, and some Christmas cheer. And we're going to invite you, if you haven't already given your Christmas stocking offering, to be able to do it safely at that time and kind of see the stockings on our fireplace in person. They'll be right out here. So come and stay just a little while after church. We won't be very long, but we'll have a really good time, we promise you. And so thank you so much. Consider giving a significant gift for you at the end of this year. If for some reason you got behind in your giving, this is a great way to do it. Uh, give to their Christmas stocking offering year end. And uh, just to say how much your gifts encourage us. It means a lot to us that you continue to think of us and support us during these very challenging times. And now we have another opportunity to thank people. And I'm going to give instructions to the pe two people we're thanking when we're doing it so uh, we can get a chance to rehearse today. Um, so, you know, one of the... Uh, today we have a great opportunity to thank and honor two very special people who've had a lasting impact on our community. Deacon Mary is leaving very soon, within the next week, to join her family in Texas. And though she'll still stay connected to Suncoast MCC virtually in her heart, uh, we will miss her presence and, and your ministry. Also, Nikki Lachambre served as our choir director and then our music minister for several years until she had to retire for medical reasons. 
when she retired, the pandemic was just beginning. And we thought, well, in a, in a month or two, we'll be able to do a, a special celebration and thank her. And uh, of course, we never had the chance to do that. So this is our first time be able to be outside to see your faces. We thought it was a wonderful time uh, to honor her and, uh, and thank her for her service. And um, it's just wonderful to see you today, too. So, yeah. You go first. And I want to say, uh, just uh, as, okay, after um, Vicki will uh, speak about Mary. And Mary, at that time, then, we want you to come and get your certificate, just your certificate, and come in front of this microphone and just say a little something. Okay? Uh, so, Mary, how about if you stand? <laughs> so, Mary, you, you welcomed Reverend Nancy and I when we arrived three and a half years ago with open arms. And you ex we experienced you as someone who was always willing to reach out. You re especially reached out to people, those who had special needs. You had a special gift of reaching those people who were grieving and people who just couldn't attend church anymore and were homebound. You have been, as a deacon, very faithful, both inside the church, and you've taken the church outside to others in hospitals, in their homes, taken the church into their hearts. Mary, you always were humble. You always were very positive, always had a good attitude. Whether you were leading worship, whether you were uh, leading small groups, or whether you were visiting people. You, we always found you to be very understanding and caring and blessing all of us. And we are going to miss you so much. We're happy for you, excited that you will go and be with your family. And you will always be in our hearts. And you will always be a part of us. And hopefully we will we'll still be connecting virtually. So Mary, if you can step over there and get your certificate. First, I want to say you have honored me and blessed me immensely by allowing me to be a part of this church. This church will always be in my heart. I'm taking you with me, and when I come back, and I will be back for vacation and visiting, I will make sure I am here. Um, thank you for all the angels among you and all the ways that you have made me a better person and made me the person I'm supposed to be. So thank you very much. So, Nikki, <laughs> don't say stay there for a minute. We're going to talk about you first. <laughs> <clears throat> Nikki, you were also here when we got here more than three years ago, though you hadn't been here that long. Um, we so appreciate your service. The choir, under your direction, did some very challenging music. As a member of the choir, I can say that, including with our friends at Church of the Trinity. You brought in special musicians and friends and guests for concerts to perform at church, widening our horizons. You were an anchor behind the keyboard Sunday after Sunday, and you built friendships and connections with church members as you nurtured our spiritual gifts. We were all grieved when you experienced the physical challenges that it made it impossible to continue. We continue to pray for your healing and for things to improve day by day. And you are in our hearts and will always be a part of this church family. We love you. If you'll get your certificate and come up here. So. <laughs> oh, wow. Thank you so much. Now I didn't bring tissue. Um, it's an honor, really, to be a part of Suncoast for so many years. And I think, honestly, that God put me in the right place for when I got the news that I did receive. 
and the many friendships I've made along the years or over the years has really helped anchor me and able to get through what I've had to go through <laughs> and I'm forever grateful and thank you so much for the blessings and the friendships over the years I truly cherish them thank you And if you're keeping count, I am not pregnant. prepare for communion, I invite you to retrieve the communion packet that was provided at your chair. There are two seals, 
one for the bread and one for the juice. Unseal the top seal and wait until instructed for us to consume together. Paul's letter to the Hebrews proclaims, do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers, for by doing so, some have entertained angels without knowing it. In this season of Advent, it is right and good that we gather at the table of Jesus Christ, whose ministry was centered in showing hospitality inviting us all, no matter whether we feel at home in our faith or we feel at times like strangers. Let us take a moment of silence to set aside any hesitation or obstacle to this invitation as we open our hearts to God. Know that the things you have shared with God are all being lifted away on the wings of God's love. Be assured that we are freed and forgiven, beloved children of the most gracious God. In the beginning, divine creator, you set everything in motion. With bold ingenuity, you splashed the sky with light and stars, sun and moon, wind and clouds, rainbows and winged ones. And you called forth our lives from the dust and you called it good. You sent your son Jesus, your message made flesh to dwell among us, harbinger of hope, prince of peace, cup of joy, bread of love. And so we proclaim this ancient song with all of the saints and angels. Holy, holy, holy God, God of power, God of might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you. Blessed are you. On the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he took bread gave thanks and blessed it, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks, shared it with his disciples and said, Take, drink from this, all of you. This is the blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Touch us, O Spirit, with your transforming power Open us to your promise of resurrection from fear and death. In partaking of these elements, make us a people ready to become your messengers of peace in all that we say and do. Amen. In our belief and in the MCC churches worldwide, all are welcome. None are excluded. All are welcome to partake in all the elements and be a part of our church. Because Christ and God first accepted us, we accept each other for who we are, no matter where we are in our walk in Christ. Please consume now 
the bread and juice at your seats as together we receive the bread of life and the cup of heaven. Angels, we have heard a lie sweetly singing o'er the plains and the mountains in reply echoing their joyous strains. Gloria in excessis You may leave the communion containers next to your chairs, and we will dispose of them properly after the service. Let us pray. God of angels, of peace, of good surprises, open our hearts in this holy season. Turn our thoughts and actions to love and justice, to creating peace on earth and will for all. In Christ's name we pray. Alleluia. Amen. So before our benediction today, I uh, would like to say a special thank you to our technology team. Haven't they done a fabulous job? It's been uh, hours and hours of coordinating and trial runs to get us uh, to today, so thank you. I also want to recognize Dr. David Katz. This is his first in-service worship. David, stand, will you please? Our music minister, we are so, uh, so grateful to have you, David, and uh, thankful that you could do it in person this time. Yes. We believe that there are angels among us called within us and not just from above to give us peace in these times of trial to show us how to live to teach us how to give to call us to be light and love amen so i invite you to stay seated for our postlude and then we will have you leave and we'll give you instructions for leaving row by row Okay, so in the back we have our uh, volunteers. Linda is there. So if you will start releasing people, if you'll stay in your seats until Linda tells you you can leave. And remember to keep six feet distance. And if you feel like hugging somebody, 
Give him the Suncoast hug. God bless you. We love you. See you next Sunday. There's one little problem when I sit in my chair. <laughs> we need to put some grits under me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, right, I saw. <laughs> good good, good uh, improvising. I mean, sad thing they don't show up. Yeah. <laughs> great job. Great, great job. <laughs> yeah, just for an hour. It was Halloween. <laughs>